Hey everyone, thank you for coming today. Uh, Disney asked me to talk a little bit about Honey and Bees because Christopher Robin is out on Blu-ray and we know that Honey is Winnie the Pooh's favorite food. Um, we have two beehives in our backyard. Um, we are on the east side and I know Chris has been to my yard. I think Billy, wherever she ended up going. If you want to bring the kids to the backyard next summer, you're welcome to bring them out and see what the bees do. We have one hive in our backyard that is actually, um, we got from a local apiary or a beekeeper. And then we have another hive that we actually collected a swarm from the woods out by St. John's. And we use something called a bee vacuum. And we hooked it up to a shop vac and carefully sucked the bees out of this fallen tree and then transported them across the state. So every time we get bees in our yard, um, we get a box of three pounds of bees, and there's the queen and her attendants in there. The three pounds of bees equates to about 5,000 bees. And we take them and we literally hit the box and shake it into the hive. And there is a video on my YouTube channel of shaking the bees into the hive. There's also a video on there of us sucking the bees with a bee vacuum, so you can see how that process works. Um, we started beekeeping four years ago, I think it was. And this was basically to get honey for our property and for, you know, they take care of all the plants in their yard, but it was more local honey is really good for your allergies. And the town that we live in doesn't allow me to have chickens. So I went for bees because I can have bees. And we do what we call natural beekeeping. So I don't mess with the bees that much while they're out there. I check them maybe once a month. And even the ones from the fallen tree, as soon as we put them into this box, this is called, it's very sticky still, this is called a super. And there are eight frames in here, and a lot of them are actually empty. And there's a substrate here, and they take this and they use this to build the comb off of. You can, I don't know, um, I know Regina that's here also has bees. I don't know if you guys use the plus plastic substrate or not in yours. But we have some that do not have this, and we put little bits of wax in there, and they use that as a guide. So they build all the comb from scratch each year. And we don't get a ton of honey at this point. Um, we're hoping that our bees actually survive the winter. And this box here will have eight frames of honey in it when it's full. And this is a full frame of honey. So this has about, it's about five or 10 pounds of honey that they created this summer for us. So we only take what we need and not what they don't need to survive the winter. Um, I only took, I think, five frames of honey this year, and all of you have a little bear that's filled with some of our honey as well. And all I do from here is I take this and I cut, I actually score some lines in this, put it in a bowl and crush it, and then I strain it twice and put it right in the jars. So it's all raw honey. It's not processed. It's not heated up, anything like that. And yeah, so that's the very basics of our beekeeping. What questions does anybody have? Anybody have questions? How many times do you get stung? So this year I did not get stung at all. What? I know even with the wild bees, uh, the wild bees are oddly the nicest bees I've ever had. They, we get the bees from the apiary and we get Italian bees, I believe they are. And last year they were a hot hive, so they were mean. And when I tried to get the honey last year, I got stung seven times in one hand, through two pairs of gloves, so my hand was swollen like Mickey Mouse. Um, and I think I got stung two other times last summer too. Once walking in the yard and the bee was on clover and I was walking barefoot so they stung the bottom of my foot. And then once it got stuck in my hair. So when I go out to get the honey out of the hive or to check on them to make sure that the baby's, um, the brood is doing really well, I tend to, um, I do wear a veil and I keep my hair tied up because they do get in your hair. Um, they're not trying to attack you or anything like that, but they just, you know, you're invading their home and anytime you move the frames around, you're basically rearranging their house and the rooms in their house. So they're getting a little upset about that. Um, and then I wear gloves, but usually I'll go out in shorts and a tank top and I'll spray or I'll smoke them that calms them down, it basically blocks their pheromones or the signals from each other, so they know they're not being attacked. Um, other questions? So I told Miss S that you had bees as pets, mm -hmm. and she wants to know why they don't run away. Because as soon as they know where their home is and where the queen is, they will always return home. 
So they go out from the box and they go about four or five miles from your house or their house and they go out and they find all the pollen they can get and they come back and they turn it into honey to feed the babies and to feed the queen. And then they need to have access to plants and they need to have access to water. And we live relatively close to a big body of water. They just go out and get the water there and come back. Um, we generally do not feed them anything. So I don't, until winter, I do give them food in the winter. But throughout the summer, I just let them go out and pollinate the neighbor's yards. Um, if you look, as you drive past our driveway, you can see where the beehives are. They're painted bright teal. I do not hide them from the neighbors. You can see them from the road. I've only had one complaint from a neighbor, and it was they weren't pollinating his watermelon. And I can't tell my bees where to go pollinate. They just kind of do their own thing. But at the, um, at the peak of summer, if the hive is healthy, you can have 80,000 bees in each hive. And we sit about 30 feet away on our patio and you never see a bee. You might have one come up and check and see how, what you're doing, but they don't really bother you at all. So, um, The only other thing I can think of for like the little kids, there are really four types of bees inside your hive. One is the queen bee. She has her attendant bees that just like any other queen, they will take care of her, make sure she's fed and everything's taken care of. You have the worker bees, and they transition jobs all the way through from feeding the babies, cleaning the house, going out and foraging, and the worker bees only live, I want to say, after they hatch about three or four weeks. And then you have the drones, which are the boy bees. And they, you can tell the difference, they have much bigger eyes and they don't have stingers, but what they really are is they are the protectors and the brood squad. So if something comes in the hive that they don't want there, they will physically pull them out and remove them from the hive. But in the winter, because the queen and her workers and attendants need to um, survive the winter and really the boys just eat, they don't really do anything in the winter, they kill all of the boy bees in the winter. So the first crop of bees every spring, the brand new baby bees are going to be boy bees. So they're strong enough and big enough to protect the hive when spring comes. So, and the queen bee will lay about 1,000 to 2,000 eggs a day. So once she's locked in the hive, once she goes out and she's full of everything she needs to be, she goes out, I think three or four days after she finds her new home, and she will lay one to 2,000 eggs a day for the rest of her life. So, and how does it take you to process your honey from honeycomb to final product? Um, so once, like I'll probably take this inside tonight, it'll probably take me a good couple hours for each frame because I have a, um, my boyfriend got me a double strainer, so I will put it in there and I'll crush it and then I just let it kind of strain into the bowl and then I just put it into jars. So it's not that long, we do have a big spinner in the basement, um, but it doesn't seem to like our frames very well, so we don't use it, I just crush everything. And then I take, um, I put slow cooker liners in our slow cooker and I actually render the wax down into little bricks so that I can use it for lotion or everything else. And any of the particulates after the fact can be used. Um, they, you get this like brown weird kind of crud after the fact and I use it, you can use it for fire starters for campfires. And so pretty much everything they make is usable. And even here on the hive you'll see this kind of orange sticky stuff and that's called propolis. And it's made by the bees, it's a glue that holds the frame together and it holds these, as you notice, I was kind of struggling to get these out. It holds them into place, but what you can do is you can actually, it's um, antimicrobial, I believe you can actually chew it. They use it as old dental medicine and it can make your mouth go numb. So if you get a cut or you get stung by a bee, you can put some of the propolis on it and the pain will go away almost instantly. No, if you care for it, free. Any other questions? How do the bees survive the winter? Not very well. Um, <laughs> honestly, we haven't been able to overwinter them yet. Um, every year we end up having to get more bees because they don't seem to handle our winters very well. I do put up a wind guard for them. This year we're getting blankets that they make specially to wrap the hive. But inside the hive, if it's a strong hive, they will kind of lock their legs together and go in a ball around the, um, the queen and the brood in the shape of kind of like a football. And basically they use their wings and the vibrations to keep them alive.
lot of the ice and the really cold winds, it just, they don't seem to make it very well. The wild hive we have actually survived last winter in a fallen tree. So we have really high hopes they might actually make it in a actual supportive structure this time with food. So we're hopeful. We're hopeful this next spring we don't have to buy bees again. But we keep doing it every year, hoping and hoping. So. Any other questions? What is the cost of the bees? To get the starting box with a queen, I think it's about 120. So, um, and then after you get all of the woodware to set up and build the hive, I want to say that was probably another 150. So once you get the kits to start, it's just, as long as your bees survive, there's no cost at the beginning of spring. But if it doesn't, it's another couple hundred each year. And for some reason, you know, we're willing to do that each year, even though we don't get a ton of honey. So <laughs> at this point, we're only making or getting enough honey to, you know, for what we go through until we steal a frame at the 4th of July and then steal some at the end of the summer. I think they're going to start bringing out food soon. 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 So let me know if you guys have any other questions. Otherwise, thank you for coming. Um, be sure to use the hashtags and all of that good stuff because we hope Disney will let us do more events. Oh, and, and so everyone knows in your little goodie bag, the one um, thing, it's a digital download of the film. Yeah, so you all get a copy of the film. It's a cardboard thing. Just in case. Just in case. <laughs> so, thank you guys.